Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Sunday 10 a.m. technique at the 007 online crop. And we are going to be making an impossible card today. And if you've never heard of an impossible card, it'll be something new. And if you've done it before, then hopefully it'll be a reminder of the technique. So we have been looking at our current catalog, which is the April to June catalog. And we have been having a good look at the Hey Handsome collection, which is the featured collection for the month of May with Close to My Heart. And so today we're going to be using some of the pattern paper from here and uh, coordinating cardstock. And we're also going to be using the scrapbooking stamp set. Now I haven't shown you this, but I would have pointed out that there is a card making stamp set that goes along with this collection as well. It's called a Hey Handsome Card Making Stamp Set. And it has um, this image of uh, a man and then two different children. And they've um, made it so that the children can be holding the, the, the man's hand. And it says, Happy Father's Day, of course, because we're heading up to June for Father's Day. And it says, A father is someone you look up to no matter how tall you grow. Happy Father's Day. And also this one over here that says, You may not have given me the gift of life, but life gave me the gift of you, which I think is wonderful. And so um, we're going to be looking at this one, the scrapbooking stamp set. But there are other things in the collection as well. There is a scrapbooking workshop kit that creates three double page layouts and it has die cuts and exclusive papers that aren't available in the collection normally. And then there is also the card making workshop kit and it makes um, 16 cards for each of these four designs and it includes an exclusive stamp and thin cut set and then everything that you need to create the card, except for it says um, additional supplies over here. So if you're ever looking at the kits, take a look at the additional supplies. And for this one, it's just some of the ink colors. So um, Harbor Pine Toffee Black ink colors. So if you already have those ink colors, then there's nothing really extra to get and foam tape. And then um, for this one, it has foam tape, glue dots, and there was um, copper metallic paint markers. And there's a few little techniques on this scrapbooking set where they show you how to splatter with a metallic marker. And I think there's a couple spots maybe where they just outline something. Um, but again, those are totally optional techniques. So you don't have to have those extra little bits on there. So those are just a little bit of peeks at what else is included in the Hey Handsome collection. If you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy or good morning. And uh, so that I know you're here. And if you're watching later, you can say replay. Good morning, Robin. And Ina's here too. Hello, hello. Deborah, good morning. Hey, Heather. Everybody's joining me bright and early on a Sunday. Good morning, Mary. So we are going to be making an impossible card. And I don't know if you've ever... Um, created one before, but I thought it was just kind of a unique presentation and a fun way to share uh, a message with someone. So we're going to start out with a standard size of card base, but instead of being a folded card base, it's just a single piece of cardstock, which actually makes this um, style of card fairly economical to make as well because you can get four of these out of a standard size piece of um, cardstock. You can get four of them. So we're going to start out with a piece that is five and a half by four and a quarter. So if you're crafting along with me, grab, <laughs> grab something quick and cut a five and a half by four and a quarter. And um, our cardstock is double sided. And so that adds a little interesting element to this card and you will see why in a few moments um, but if you use black card stock or white card stock that's not going to uh, be an issue um, personally I don't think it's an issue that you're gonna see two different tones of the card stock I think that just makes it all the more fun so we're starting out with our five and a half by four and a quarter 
and we're going to turn it on our Versamat. We're going to do a score line. So I'm going to put it here and line it up with the lines on my Versamat. And I'm just waiting for my video to catch up with me to make sure I'm all good and in the screen. And what I want to do is I want to make one score line. This is it's not, not a tricky card. One score line. And we're going to score it along this short side, the four and a quarter side. And we're going to score it right in the middle. So that puts us at two and one eighth. And one eighth is halfway between two inches and two and a quarter. So we're going to just line it up there at two and an eighth. Make sure you lined up straight. If you've got a scoreboard, then you can certainly go ahead and do that. And we're just going to make our score line at two and an eighth. Okay. And that's all of our scoring. Easy peasy. Hey, Allison. Nice to see you joining. Yes, I did get a little bit of sleep. I slept from about midnight until four, <laughs> uh, in, which is when I had to take my daughter to the, um, and my son to um, go gliding today. They were taking a bus up to Base Borden, and they were going gliding with the Air Cadets. So then we're going to take our card that we've just scored, and we're going to turn it in half, or sorry, turn it 90 degrees. So now we've got our five and a half inch length going across, and this is where we need to pay attention. So yes, it is fun, Robin, and actually Julia sent me a sn quick snap of herself sitting in the cockpit of the glider waiting to go up. She's like, I'm literally in the plane. So she was very excited. Her first time ever in an airplane, and it's an airplane with no engine. <laughs> so on this side, um, at, we're going to kind of use our score line as a, as, a, as a stopping point. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut... Um, from the top, um, two and three quarters. So let's go to two and three quarters, which is the halfway point. Okay. So we're at the halfway point on this five and a half inch side. We're going to two and three quarters, but we're not going to cut all the way through. We're going to start at the top and we're going to cut just to our score line. Okay. So we're stopping at the score line. And so let's trim. If you have a trimmer that has the measurements and um, works well <laughs> for this kind of thing, I have a rotary trimmer. And with a rotary trimmer, because it's a big wheel, um, it's very hard to determine exactly where you're stopping. So that's why I'm using um, an X-Acto blade and, um, and my ruler. So I've now cut, so you can see there, from the top down to the score line, at the two and three quarter inch mark. Okay, now we're going to line this back up because I took it off my lines. <laughs> and this time we're gonna do some cutting below the score line. So now our score line is going to be our starting point. So I'm going to come here at one inch. So line my ruler up at one inch and I'm going to cut from the score line to the bottom. So I'll start at the score line and cut down to the bottom like that. Okay, now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut at four and a half. So I'm going to line myself up at four and a half. And this time again, I'm starting at the score line and going down to the bottom. So line myself up here and cut at four and a half down to the bottom. So now your card base, let me close that so I don't accidentally cut myself. So now your card base should have a score in the middle. It should have a split at the top all the way down to the score line uh, in the middle. And then you should have two one inch little tabs on either side at the bottom. Okay. Now our next step is to fold on the score line. So you can do it all together or you can do it in two pieces, but you just fold along the score line, make sure everything lines up, and give it a good crease down like that. And I'm using mink cardstock. I don't think I said that, but I am using mink cardstock. Okay, 
So now it should look like that. You've created a little, a little bend in the middle and it's got all these flippy flappy things. Now this next step is one that you have to pay attention to. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to envision this chunk of our card standing up in the air. Okay. In fact, I'm going to turn it this way so that this chunk of the card is standing up because this is my dark side of my card stock. Okay. So now we've turned it around. <laughs> we went from having our two pieces at the top to having our two pieces at the bottom, okay? And the the dark side of the cardstock is facing me on this part that's sticking up straight in the air. And all I want to do is I'm gonna hold this side, gonna kind of pinch here and hold this side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this side with this little tab at the back and this little part at the front, and I'm going to twist it. So I'm using just the score line as my pivot, and I'm keeping this tall portion pinched between my fingers so it's not moving, and I'm going to twist so that this big part becomes the back and this little part becomes the front. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. I'm taking it like this, and I'm just twisting it so that they're folded opposite ways. See how we've now created sort of a, um, not exactly a mirror image of each other? but we're just twisting it. And then we can kind of lay it down and we can fold this to the back and fold it to the front so it stands up. And it's like having two little feet. Do you guys remember those little wind-up toys that had the little the little feet with the notches and they ee, 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 ee. They usually made a sort of a buzzing sound as they went zzzz. You know, the little walking chicks and things. That's what this reminds me of, is those little walking chick feet. So that's all we had to do is we just took this portion and we just pivoted it around on the score line and stuck it back down. Okay, easy peasy. <laughs> Good morning, Denise. So let's set this aside for a second because now we need to do, so that's our card base. Now we just need to do our decorating. So for the decorating, we need two pieces of pattern paper and it helps to have a pattern that doesn't have a right way or a wrong way. So um, the plaid would work, this would work, um, and this is pattern paper from that Hey Handsome collection. And um, so I'm gonna use this, because it doesn't matter which direction this goes, it all, it all works, right? You're gonna take your two pieces, and these have been cut to two and a half by four inches. So you need two, two and a half by four inches, I'm using the same pattern, but you could use a different pattern if you wanted. If you were using a pattern that mattered which direction it was going, here's a little hint. If it makes a difference, then put one the right way up and then turn the other one the wrong way up because we're going to stack them one on top of the other, okay? So if, you, if it matters which direction, like say you had the pattern paper that has the words all over it, you would take one with the words facing the right way up, and then you would turn this one so that the words were upside down and stack them. But it doesn't matter to me because my pattern is all the same. So I'm going to stack them one on top of the other, line them up on my Versamat, or you can use your paper trimmer for this because we're going to do some cutting. So I've got my cutting and my ruler again. Good morning, Tammy. Nice to see you're watching. And what we're going to do is we're going to come three quarters of an inch in from this side, um, from the top right corner, which puts us at one and three quarters. But we are not, um, we're not cutting all the way through. We're going to come down two and one eighth inch. <laughs> I know, we're going to get you on that. So we're going to come down two and an eighth. So I like to just visualize in my head, one inch, two inch, and an eighth. So I know that I need to stop at that point, okay? So I'm going to start at the top, and sometimes if you're doing it this way, you have to maybe cut twice, but um, I'm going to keep my eye on that two and an eighth. So there's one inch, two inch, and an eighth. 
And then I'm going to go again just to make sure I got through both. And I stop at two and an eighth. If you want, you could draw a line with your pencil. Um, I didn't do that because I don't feel like erasing it. Then we're going to turn our ruler this way. And we are going to cut across at that two and one eighth inch down. So two and one eighth inch. Line up our ruler. And we're going to come from the left side all the way over to where we stopped cutting here. We're going to cut a corner off of this. And it will make sense when we put it on our, there's one layer. There we go. So we've come in three quarters of an inch from the right upper corner, three quarters of an inch, which put us at one and three quarters. And then we have come down two and an eighth inches, which is one and seven eighths inch up from the bottom. And we've just cut out that corner. Now you can save those pieces and use them on a scrapbook layout or on another card. Easy peasy. You'll find a use for them, so don't get rid of them. But now you'll be able to see that these shapes will fit. Ta-da! right on there, just like that. Okay, so you remember how I was talking about the fact that we have two colors of cardstock, or like double-sided cardstock? So if I fold it down like this, you will see that this is the dark side and this is the light side. But I find once you've got that pattern paper on there, if I can pick it up like this, um, the amount of the cardstock that's showing really does not make any difference, right? You're, you're not going to be drawn to that. You're going to have other stuff going on on the card. So let's grab our liquid glue because I find that's about the easiest for me. And we're going to add these pattern papers on there. If you wanted to be fancy dancy or make it look a bit vintagey, you could do some edge distressing. You could do some inking, all sorts of things. Now I'm just going to fold this down out of the way so that I can center this on here. How cool is that? And then we're going to take this one. So this is why it's called an impossible card, because once you get it done, people are like, how the heck did you do that? <laughs> how did that happen? It's all one piece of paper, isn't it? <laughs> And you're like, yep, sure was. There we go. And we'll put our pattern there. There we go. If you were having um, a dinner party, this could be a really cool, like, thank you for attending, but also a place card holder, you know, at the table. It could, um, it could be, like, if you're having a buffet, you could use this as signs for what everything is on the buffet. There's so many different things it could be because this part stands up. If you were, say, um, somebody who goes to craft fairs and you wanted to make little signs to say how much something costs, this would be a cute little way of doing it. I don't know. There's just so many ideas that you can do with this particular design. And then what we need to do is we need to create some stability because this kind of, um, you, you know, you don't want your card doing this, right? It's got It's got a little bit of a stability issue. So to do that, we're going to bring in another piece of cardstock, and this is five and a half by one inch. And we also have a piece of the pattern paper that is five and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. So we're going to stick one on top of the other. We'll do that first. And then... We are going to add it to our card on the front. So you're going to decide which side is going to be your front side. There we go. Just center our pattern paper on top of there. And then we're going to line this up. And this is where the Versamat comes in handy because we want to make sure that we get our cards square. <laughs> we don't want to get our pieces glued on and then realize that we're out of alignment. So what I like to do is I line it up on my four and a quarter by five and a half, and then grab something that's a little bit heavy, 
and stick it on there so it's not so it's not shifting around okay and then we need to stick this on here so I'm going to flip it over so that I know which parts of it need some adhesive I could use liquid glue for this but I'm going to go for the double-sided tape so I know that I need to add a little bit here at this end like so and then on this end we need a little bit more just like that okay and now our weight is keeping everything in place so we can take the backing off like this and we have about two inches in depth from the edge to the crease and this piece is one inch so if we go about half an inch from I can't get the end of this if we're about half an inch up or three-eighths of an inch up that will put it in a nice spot I'm gonna go half an inch up because that's just easy and just lay that on there like that and that is now finished now we just need to add our sentiment and whatever else we're gonna decorate it with so I'm going to decorate on this side I want to have this part at the front of my card and of course this back side could be used for the message the bottom could be used for the message uh, any way you want to look at it and um, so I'm going to bring in a piece of pine cardstock which coordinates with that pattern paper and I have cut this to three and a quarter inches by one and seven eighths and that's just going to fit nicely on the front of that panel that sticks up and add that on there like so and center it on the front lovely so now when it stands up it looks like that I know it's hard for you guys to tell because you're looking at it from above <laughs> yes this is a really neat design isn't it Robin I think it's just interesting and then I want to add in some kind of sentiment let me close my glue before I forget so I have the um, hey handsome scrapbooking uh, stamp set that you've been watching me use and I'm going to use this one that says fresh humor serve daily because I want to make this into uh, like a birthday card kind of a guy birthday card but I think this fresh humor serve daily especially um, actually this would be really cool as a Father's Day card <laughs> so um, so you could you know the dad joke thing right yeah totally so I'm gonna make one as a birthday card and then later I'm gonna make one as a Father's Day card because I think that would be that would be cute so we're gonna use this fresh humor one and I've got a piece of white daisy loaded up in my um, stamping platform because I want to make sure that I get a good image I've got my sentiment loaded in there and I'm going to um, use paprika ink which is one of the coordinating colors for the collection and I'm just gonna ink this up I've seasoned it already it's been used before and just get some good coverage on there and then we can go ahead and stamp this down I'm gonna move down to the bottom here so it's near the edge of my table and lift and then you know what I'm gonna go in for a second layer that's the benefit of using the platform as I'm learning to use it more often <laughs> and just go ahead and stamp again there we go now I want to show you the little trick that you can do with a stamp this is a technique so we've got like a little banner going through the center of our card here I'm gonna cut off some of the excess paper and what I want to do is I want to envision that this little banner continues okay and so if you are new to doing this kind of thing you may want to lightly draw the continuation of the line with your pencil but I'm just gonna kind of visualize it so I'm gonna imagine that the banner comes out and I'm gonna snip right up to that edge of the red 
Now, normally I wouldn't. Normally I would leave a halo of white around this red circle, but my sizing is such that I need to be as close as I can get to that red to make it fit onto my card <laughs> and still fit in the envelope. So um, so I've just snipped in there kind of on an ang um, on a curve, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to kind of come at a curve and join right to where that red is. Then I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm going to kind of visualize where that curve goes. And snippity doo da. And again, this one, kind of visualize the curve like that. And then I can go around my circle. And yes, fussy cutting around a circle is like one of the most <laughs> difficult things to fussy cut because you're trying to make it look like a good circle. Now, thankfully, I have a nice stamped edge here to follow, but inevitably it will be a little wonky and you're just going to have to deal with that. <laughs> and then we're going to come up here and we're going to do the top of the circle. If you get really wonky, um, sometimes inking the edge will help cover wonkiness or distressing the edge. <laughs> you know, make it a little bit distressed on purpose to hide the wonky. And that's totally acceptable in my books. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that my things all line up and meet where they should. Because sometimes we get a little off. That looks all right. And then I'm also going to visualize where the end of my banner should end. So you're going on a curve. So you kind of move your scissors along and arc them. So you get the right angle and snip. And then we can come over to this side and we're going on an angle and it's curving this way. And we're going to snip so that you've not just got a straight line. And then we can dovetail it. Why not? We're going to all the effort to make it look cool. Let's just lean right into this banner. So we're going to snip in the center and then snip in from the corners. Again on the other side, snip in the center. And remember, I'm not going on straight. I'm following that same curved line. Snip. And then from the edge, outside corner to the top of your snip outside corner to the top of your snip and there we go we have our fresh humor served daily and we can go ahead you can see that that just fits just fits on there <laughs> so that's why i had to be very careful with my circle cutting so i can go ahead and add that i could actually pop dot that but i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep it flat why not we'll keep it flat for now Although it look, it would look cool popped up. And you can pop it up because this is the part that will fold down when it's in the envelope. So you could put um, the extra height there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up, try and get it sort of in the center, and try to keep all of that circle on as much as I can. Oops, there, of course, it jiggled. Did I take the backing off? Yes, I did. <laughs> I had a moment there where I was like, did I even take the backing off? So there's our fresh humor served daily. Then we want to add our little happy birthday. And so I went looking through the stamps that were on my desk and I found my totally awesome stamp set. And it has a nice little happy birthday right there. And so that's what I'm going to use for this. And so I've cut a little piece of white daisy to two and a half by one and five eighths. <laughs> but of course, you're going to cut it based on whatever your um, stamp is, right? So two and a half by one and five eighths. Going to ink it up with the same color. So we're keeping within our mink and pine and paprika color scheme. And just stamp that on there. Happy birthday. And then since we dovetailed our little humor banner, we might as well dovetail this. So again... A little snip and then from the corners to the top of the snip just like that Ooh, flying around a little snip the big thing with dovetailing is that you don't snip in too far um, dovetailing always starts looking a little weird when it gets too deep 
And so that's always my caution. Just make if, you know, if, if all else fails, make it a little less and then you can always make it a little bigger <laughs> if you, if you need more. And then we can go ahead and I'm just going to kind of center it on this piece here and centered from top to bottom like that. There's our happy birthday. Let's add in a little bit of extra embellishment. I've got my black and white dots. And I'm going to use some of these little black stars that are here. So let's see. We'll add a big one right there. And maybe one here. And one here. So we've created our visual triangle and we've got nice little embellishment going on there. And of course it folds flat, goes into the envelope. We can write our message on the back side and if we need more space we can add some more message under there. But isn't that so cute? Our fresh humor served daily. Happy birthday using our mink cardstock as our base doing that fun twisting motion to create these sort of little feet <laughs> to hold it up and um then we've got our pine cardstock on here our hey handsome pattern paper our hey handsome fresh humor served daily stamped in paprika and then our turtly awesome happy birthday and then a few little black stars because you know the guy in our life is a star I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this impossible card come together and if you decide to create one of your own, snap a photo of it and post it in the comments where I post this photo and I would love to see it. All right, have a wonderful morning. We will see you at noon for chat and craft and have a great time crafting. Toodaloo. Bye.